you've recently brought your burn rate down to under a million dollars. You now have six million dollars in the bank. What's the timeline that they talked about for MDMA? Because I wanted to ask, does this six million dollars get you that MDMA approval timeline? So in the MAPS press release, it says the FDA grants priority review for drugs that, if approved, would represent significant improvements in the safety or effectiveness of the treatment, diagnosis, or prevention of serious conditions when compared to standard applications. Hey everyone, welcome to our latest Trade of Black podcast. Hope you enjoyed your long weekend. No comments today, no live stream, but we do have a pretty strong podcast here today. A lot of you have been following this story for a number of months. It involves Numinous Wellness. They made a big announcement late last week as well. So moving announcements regarding Lycos Therapeutics Maps, I should say, how it's been rebranded from two weeks ago, their NDA submission that was approved by the FDA. So we're going to break that down and fi figure out what that announcement means for the space and the partnership that Numinous has with them. So let's welcome back in Numinous CEO, which trades on the TSX under the ticker symbol NUMI. Peyton Nyquist, good to see you. I know it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks for you, but uh, happy 2024. Happy 2024. Yeah. Happy 2024. Getting much sleep lately? I know it's been uh, raising this money. It's not been easy, but uh, you did it. And uh, I'm sure a lot of work over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, between that and having a uh, three and a half month old at the house, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll be looking forward to some sleep here one day. Yeah. As they always say, if it was easy, they wouldn't need you. But this is the <laughs> times that we live in, right? And, uh, you know, obviously it's always good to have uh, progress in any business. And that's exactly what you guys announced. Uh, big announcement late last week was the closing of a $6 million bot deal public offering. The deal includes 50 million units at a price of 12 cents Canadian. Each unit also includes a full warrant that is exercisable for 24 months at a price of 18 cents. So a hundred million fully diluted. So now that this is done, you know, you've recently brought your burn rate down to under a million dollars. You now have $6 million in the bank. Where does this money take you now? What's next for the company? Because this has been a big question among investors for the past three to six months. Yeah, and and you know, hopefully, what people are seeing is you know we talk a lot about the burn rate getting down under a million. Um, you know, this capital, our big push here now over the next three to six months is is get that burn rate down to zero, and uh, and you know, hopefully, making money in in the not too distant future as well. Um, you know, that regardless of this money, that is the priority for the company. Um, yes, we've been able to raise some money. Yes, the market is is looking better. Um, but, you know, Numinous was always built to be uh, a sustainable and, and uh, a company that can grow based off of uh, its own operations. And, and that continues to be the really targeted focus for us. Um, you know, raising the capital, one, helps us get there a little bit quicker. But two, and and you know you brought this up with with the FDA and its acceptance and priority review of MDMA assisted therapy and even giving it a, a potential target launch date. Um, this capital also helps us get really really prepared for day one. And and you know we've shared this before, but you know our business model, be it training, but also clinical sites, you know really benefits from this you know acceptance now where. You know, now this and we can get more into this, but this signal is really OK. Um, you know, it's time to start getting prepared. It's it's time to start getting trained and it's time to start getting clinical sites set up and organized and and resourced to be able to offer this treatment in, you know, potentially six months from now. What's the timeline that they talked about for MDMA? Because I wanted to ask, does this six million dollars get you that MDMA approval timeline? Yeah. So if you look at the, the news release that Lycos put out, um, if they have a target approval date of August 11th of this year, um, so assuming that the FDA approves it, then there'll be about a 45 day period for the DEA to reschedule the drug. And, and I say this all under the guise of anytime you're at the mercy of regulators, yeah. you never know. Um, yeah. But the fact that it's been accepted and granted priority review um, really, really speaks to, you know, the strength of that that submission and, and the, the confidence that the FDA has in moving this through to approval. So 
What happens on that day that let's say there is, you know, legalization is then announced, like then what for the company? What does the rollout look like? And, and how do you start producing revenue right away? That's a big question, right? Yeah. So I, I think, you know, where Lycos and I, and I, you know, I can't speak for them, but I think what a lot of people need to keep in mind is, you know, in traditional drug development, pharmaceutical drug development, you know, a pharmaceutical company will research a drug, do clinical trials. Nobody will have ever heard of it before. Um, and then they'll usually take about, you know, the, the usual timeline is like 10 years of educating the market, you know, getting it implemented into however it's being distributed. Um, and that's usually a process. With this, it's really kind of the opposite where, you know, a lot of people are aware of MDMA assisted therapy. It's something that's very well known. And the clinical trial results are are very publicized. Yeah. Right. Where, you know, a lot of you take whichever drug, you know, call it any SSRI. If you ask somebody, you know, what were the clinical trial results of that drug? Very few people would actually be able to tell you. Yeah. Whereas this, you know, these clinical trial results are posted everywhere. And so I think my my assumption and, and based off of the conversations we've had, you know, what's probably top priority for Lycos is really, really ensuring that you're getting the same results that the clinical trial was showing in clinical practice. Yeah. And so, you know, you look at there's there's something in the neighborhood of, of 13 million people with diagnosed PTSD in the United States right now which is a, a huge number. And the argument is actually that it's probably quite a lot more than that. And so while a lot of people can be focused on like, okay, how do we scale this up as quickly as possible? I think what will be most important in the first couple of years is really ensuring that clients are getting the same outcomes that the clinical trial results saw, because everybody will be looking at this through a microscope. Yeah. And and that's where Numinous has a really great opportunity, you know, because we've been a part of the clinical trials, because we've done SAP with MDMA, you know, we're probably the most informed service provider in the space yeah. who knows how to really ensure those client outcomes. And so that's, you know, the big focus for us. And a part of that, obviously, is, you know, a financially sustainable model. And so, you know, we know what that looks like. We've we've done it through SAP. Um, but we've also, you know, all the clinical trial work that we've done have been in our existing clinics with our existing clients. And so we know what it's like to prepare somebody, get the scheduling set up, get the drug set up, get reimbursement set up, all of those things that are, you know, call it the kind of non-sexy parts of psychedelic therapy that are really what's going to make this financially successful and most importantly, successful for the people that are getting access to this treatment. Yeah, and I think everyone has bought into that portion of the story. Here's a question that people ask, because you brought this up, 13, 14 million people, PTSD in America. And a big question right now concerning the industry is, how do we get enough therapists and where are the clinics gonna come from? As far as the rollout and scaling up, it's going to be a yeah. major challenge off the top. But we understand that, and this maybe you can walk us through because you touched on this probably six months ago at a podcast, it's all about incremental steps. So, no, you're not going to overnight be able to service 13, 14 million Americans. That's just not practical. But what right. are the incremental steps to make sure that you're growing and generating revenue? Like, what are we looking at as far as how many people we can start treating within the first year? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's where I think Numinous's model is, is really kind of going to be the model you see in the future where, you know, and ketamine was kind of a, a good example of this where, you know, a couple of years ago when there was a lot of excitement around ketamine assisted therapy, you started seeing all these clinics popping up that were solely focused just on offering ketamine to people. Okay. And unfortunately, you saw, you know, not great client outcomes from some of those clinics. And financially, a lot of those clinics really struggled and have had to shut their doors. Yeah. Where Numinous is really focused is having a diversified mental health model that includes psychedelic therapy, but is not beholden just to psychedelic therapy. You know, the majority of our revenue still comes from, you know, traditional talk therapy, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and I think that will always be the case. You have to remember like 
people don't call us saying, hey, I want to come and do psychedelic therapy. People call us saying, hey, I've got, you know, treatment resistant depression. And, you know, I want to try some things. And when those things or if those things start to not work, then they want access to, you know, call it more and more powerful treatment. Yeah. That will be true and consistent, I believe, throughout all of the different approvals. And what's interesting, and, and this is, you know, something that we don't talk enough about, but our client retention rates go up dramatically after people do ketamine assisted therapy because people see the benefit it greatly advances how they're feeling and they want to continue making sure that they're continuing to feel better and better and better right think of it as like going to the gym you don't you know one day kind of go like okay you know i'm i'm as fit as i want to be now i'm just going to stop working out yeah of course right like that and well, how so many, how many people are you treating right now related to ketamine so we did, I don't remember the exact ketamine numbers, but we did about 20, 21, 22,000 client appointments last quarter. And, oh, and, wow. and, it's, and, it's, and it's dependent on where someone is at in their treatment journey, right? right? Like, as I said, like th- some of those people will be seeing us for talk therapy right now and eventually kind of graduate into ketamine assisted therapy, right? And then continue to stay with us for ongoing care. And, and that will be, I, I think that is really the only model that makes this successful, you know, in the going forward. Do you, really. think, do you think a lot of those patients, everybody is different in every sort of way. Of course they are. Um, do you see a lot of people that are, you know, it, it, going through and experiencing the ketamine treatments will in some ways probably convert uh, some of them towards MDMA therapy as well? Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. <clears throat> That's a big number when you factor in the cost of MDMA, which again, you've stated that insurance coverage, what's the price that's like, re- it's an eight week course uh, therapy session. Is that usually how it works? Yeah. So the way, the way that the <clears throat> protocol is right now is it's three treatments with MDMA with at least one preparation session and two to three integration sessions after each dosing session. Okay. Right. And so, you know, I, I think as we continue to, to start to scale and, and kind of model this out more so, the, 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 the preparation, you know, a lot of people think like, okay, I do the prep session. I, I kind of check that box. Then I do the dosing session. I check that box. And then I do the integration session and I check that box integration is your life. Yeah. You know, it's not a, it's not another program that you just check the box and then, you know, and then what, right. It's, it's really, you know, and and you see this, and as I mentioned from client retention rates, but you also see it, you know, people who are very passionate about psychedelic work who have had their lives changed by psychedelic therapy. Yeah they don't just walk away from all of this work. No. Right. It becomes, it becomes a part of their life. I think that is all, I think people believe that. I think the rollout and the infrastructure that's got to get built is obviously the big question mark right now. When we look at this, like, look, we've just, uh, we've just like outlined this in the past that a lot of companies, including yourselves may have gone public too soon regarding this industry. Prices have been hammered, but when you're raising money, investors don't like dilution. However, um, I think raising money in the early stages of psychedelics is actually not a bad thing because if you don't, what's the other choice? Basically, yeah. the company goes defunct, which has been the case for a lot of companies in this space. But now that you've raised money, <clears throat> what is what is you think like um, you know the trajectory growth rate? You know, as far as the company itself, you have the money, the burn rate is down. You're building these relationships. Um, do you feel like you've kind of like? Whether the, uh, I guess the toughest times that this company is still around and now we're finally in place where we can actually grow. And a lot of the stuff that you've been talking about is now come to fruition. Yeah, look, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to raise a lot of money, you know, back when the market was extremely frothy. And, and we did that because, you know, I was, I was concerned, you know, at one point in time, there was something like 500 psychedelic organizations and i was watching how much money was getting raised you know off of a pitch deck essentially crazy and 
you know, the musical chairs, the music always stops. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to take that money and build a model that is, you know, financially showing, uh, you know, sustainability and growth and, and is ensuring client outcomes most importantly. I think that, and so, go ahead, you know, raising, that. yeah. And, and, and so raising this money, you know, obviously, you know, what we're seeing from maps has instilled a lot of confidence or at least a bit of confidence back in the marketplace. I think it's early days. I, if I look at, you know, what the next six to 12 months look like, um, you know, you've got maps going through their process, which, you know, we're going to assume is, is going to continue to be positive. You've got uh, clinical trial results coming from Compass yep. that, you know, I, I, I am very confident in. Um, I think the next six to 12 months for the space are going to be really exciting. Um, can I control what the market is going to do if I could do that? You know, <laughs> I know I'd be, I'd be probably sitting on a beach somewhere, but I think the company has done everything that it can to ensure success, regardless of where the markets are. Okay. Do you anticipate another 6 million down the road if and when the full warrants are exercised? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we've done that before with our other financings where we've been able to get all the warrants exercised. This placement went to uh, a lot of, or not a lot of, but a, a few very strategic hands who are very friendly to the company. You know, myself personally and my family took a, a, a very, very large portion of the financing. Um, and so those warrants, you know, the intention is that those can be used very strategically to continue to fund the company, but not be, you know, in the way of the market, you know, as, as the largest shareholder of the company, I'd love to see this market, you know, trade back to, to where I believe it should. And, you know, hopefully that that share price appreciation can continue to support all the efforts that we're making uh, it, inside the company. So what we saw a couple of years ago, do you think those days are ahead of us still pertaining to the space? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be different in the sense of, you know, I think back a couple of years ago, there was a lot of misconceptions of what this space is. And I think over the last couple of years, people have gotten very educated on, you know, what this space is, what it's treating, how it's going to be implemented. And I think, you know, most importantly is, you know, we call it like a psychedelic industry. I, I actually think that that's kind of inaccurate. I think you have two different industries that are focusing on psychedelics. I think you have drug development, biotech, pharmaceutical drug development, um, which the compasses, the ties, mind meds of the world are focusing on. And then you have mental health services yeah. and distribution <clears throat> that are also offering psychedelic therapy, which is, you know, it's, it's pretty lonely these days. And in, in that regard, Numinous is, is probably, you know, I would say one of, if not kind of the only one in the space that's doing that at the moment. Yes. At a time where it's needed now more than ever. Well, right? like the, I think, and that's what MAPS is really highlighting right now. Yeah, like when you talk about the therapy side of things versus drug development, um, I think everybody's found their lane for sure. A lot of trial and error was made, but what you know, a new emerging industry isn't. But I think a lot of people, when they look at your side of the business, say, okay, it's a big one, it's a risky one. But the thing that's appealing is the partnership and the relationships that you built with like Lycos Maps. One thing I do want to highlight is that your relationship with Rick Dalvin, everybody knows it's been a strong one. You recently appointed him as a strategic investor and that, or excuse, excuse me, a strategic advisor, big name to say the least. So how does this, or does this appointment further develop your relationship with Lycos and Maps? And if so, how? Yeah, look, I, I, I built Numinous because of my relationship that I was fortunate enough to have with Rick about seven years ago. And nobody holds more knowledge and experience of what makes these treatments successful. And I think most importantly, what is important for therapists and practitioners who want to start to be able to offer this work than Rick Doblin does. Rick's been at the very, very, very forefront of this 
for 37 years. Yeah. And, you know, with, with the rebranding of Lycos and MAPS, you know, Lycos is, is now a, a pharmaceutical drug development company mm -hmm. that that is its focus, right? Um, MAPS now has this opportunity as a nonprofit to sort of be the advocacy group in the space that really holds all of the wisdom and knowledge of, you know, what do therapists need in regards to training? Mm -hmm. What needs to get prioritized at the clinic level? so that people can be successful and treat and and clients can get the outcomes you know that that the clinical trials are showing and our opportunity to work collaboratively with both of those groups you know lycos as i mentioned and and this is my assumption i don't want to speak for them but my assumption is that they want sites that can offer and ensure the same results that they are getting in clinical trials most importantly and Numinous, you know, has been focusing on this for a very long time and can do that. And then on, you know, sort of the map side of things is we have training and, and we've, we've spoken about our intentions around experiential training and being able to launch an experiential training trial up in Canada to start to be able to get people an MDMA experience so that they can really understand what this treatment is like as they're supporting clients. And also all of the, the supportive training to be able to give people as many resources as possible so that they feel confident when they're stepping into becoming an MDMA assisted therapist. When we look at Lycos, you talked about clinical sites. This partnership that you have, like, is it an exclusive partnership? Is it a preferred partnership? Like, what define what that partnership means that gives you, I guess, um, that, 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 I guess, edge over, say, other companies. But then again, when it comes to clinical sites and a lot of that business model pertaining to the industry, uh, there's not a lot of companies right now that are doing it. Yeah, so so I would I would reframe the word partnership with collaboration. Okay. Um, Lycos cannot be seen pre-marketing or preceding a market for a drug that is not approved by the FDA. Yet. Gotcha. Okay. I just so people really, really understand that nothing, nothing could hamper or hurt their application with the FDA more than being seen kind of superseding or trying to overstep the FDA process. Right. Right. Important to understand that. Numinous as a third party site who has a relationship with these different compounds can go and start to offer things based off of what we know, based off of our experience, mm -hmm. like training, like setting up clinical sites, like the numinous network model that we've built. All of that is based off of our experience of running these protocols in our clinics, both in research as well as through SAP. So that's something that we can offer today that Lycos cannot offer or be involved with, right? Post-approval, Lycos, you can't be the owner of the clinic and the distributor of the drug. Gotcha. There's, there's very clear guidelines in regards to that. So Lycos will need sites that they feel very confident in mm -hmm. that can help ensure the best possible outcomes for clients. Hmm. So you, right now, there can't be anything in regards to exclusivity or anything like that. But as you said, if you look around the marketplace, there's not a there's, lot. There's not a lot of groups out there at the moment. Well, not doing it right, but this is why I think it's appealing for people: is the collaboration ongoing that you've worked obviously with Maps, new rebranded as Lycos now. And I think you know, with Rick now being appointed as a, a strategic advisor, I think a lot of people are curious to say, how does he further develop? I guess that relationship. And uh, how does that continue to grow if and when we get uh, legalization announced? And you said in around that August mark, which would be, you know, very big for the the industry as well as, you know, 14 million Americans, let alone we haven't even counted other countries as well. But uh, important step in the right direction. 37, 38 years. I wonder what this man is thinking about these last few days, months, you know, that, oh, my God, we're four, five, six months away from this potentially happening. And uh, 
I can't, say, I can't imagine what that day will be like for a man like him who's basically pursued a dream for 38 years. 38 years. He, he is... Uh, Rick deserves a, a, a Nobel pre- Peace Prize. Yeah, I was going to say that. He's he's raised hundreds of millions of dollars nonprofit through philanthropy. Yeah. He's done this for 37 years. And I will tell you, to this day, nobody works harder than Rick does. Mm. Nobody. Rick, the, the last two weeks, he, he was out in Dubai and he was calling me at four in the morning, his time, to answer quite like he he goes nonstop and he has very little financial interest or upside in this. He does it because he knows, you know, the potential of these therapies and and he's deeply passionate and devotional and frankly anybody or everybody who has had their lives changed by psychedelic therapy or is you know earning a salary or is a shareholder of a company everybody owes rick a, a huge amount of gratitude yeah. and and i i couldn't be more grateful uh to be able to be his friend and and to have him advising the company. Yeah, it's great. I also wanted to point out that Dane Stevens, co-founder of Optimi Health Corp, participated in the offering as well. It was also stated in the press release that Optimi Health holds a Health Canada dealer's license and that Stevens wants to support the Numinous story to ultimately expand access for psychedelic assisted therapy. So how should investors interpret this, that, you know, this was outlined in the press release? Like, meaning, is there a business relationship that you guys are building at? And, and where does this go from here? Yeah, yeah the Optimi Health guys have done an, an extremely good job of, you know, really helping, you know, going back to the non-sexy side of psychedelics, clinical implementation, but also drug manufacturing. And, you know, there's very, very few groups in the space that have been able to do what Optimi has done. I would say, you know, they're probably best in class in regards to that. Um, And as we look at, you know, how can we help advance this field forward? As I mentioned, experiential training is a huge opportunity for for us right now to be able to, you know, best ensure the quality of client outcomes and the training of practitioners. Um, And a big hurdle in regards to that for Numinous is finding a drug supplier that, you know, has all the licensing in place but can also distribute the drug in a timely fashion so that we can gotcha. get the application ap- approved by Health Canada. And we believe that Optimi, you know, is, is very, very top of that list. And, and we're very grateful for their, you know, financial support of, of you know, what we're working on together and, and, you know, very much looking forward to working together going forward. How's that look within the Canadian landscape that if the FDA were to approve uh, the protocol of MAPS uh, phase three, like let's say at some point in the summer, how would that work or how would like, there are two separate companies or I shouldn't say companies, how would you best describe the FDA agencies more or less? Yeah. Um, would they view it? Would, yeah. it ha- would it have an impact on the Health Canada reviewing and saying, yes, this is something we need to look into and eventually approve as well? Yeah, Health Canada typically, you know, follows suit with the FDA. I think the fact that they've approved SAP already, you know, shows their willingness and and um, openness to providing these therapies. I think the, the, the big question will be, will this get adopted within the universal healthcare system and be fully reimbursed? Mm-hmm. If that happens, the, it's it's huge and you know canada a lot of people don't know this but of all of the developed countries in the world canada actually has some of the highest percentage ptsd rates on the planet and how about the money stat that came up with about prescription drugs the amount of cost for insurance companies for the everyday canadian i think we rank number one in the world yeah yeah and so you know i i think i think canada presents you know, a very big opportunity. And obviously with the work we've been doing up in Canada, we're really excited to be able to support that. It's great. All right. So the big takeaway, you raised $6 million. This gets you, as you said, to uh, if and when they do announce the uh, uh, approval. Um, one last thing I wanted to bring up too was the uh, NDA submission that was actually approved by the FDA a couple of weeks ago. But uh, is that just another big step in the right direction with many believe that this will eventually be approved? Look, I, I think people need to see that like that is that is as close to a thumbs up 
as you're going to get from the FDA. Why is that? They, Why is that? They, the fact that they not only accepted it, but gave it priority review. I, and I encourage people to pull up, uh, if you look at the news release and how they talk about priority review, it's it's huge. And the fact that they've given it you know, a potential approval date already and spoken about that publicly, you yeah. know, again, I, I, I missed that part. We, so priority anytime, review means that that's the closest thing to an approval is what you're saying. And these, exactly. I don't want to like speculate, you know, at the end of the day, you know, here's the reality is, is that you understand this process better than I do and nothing's guaranteed until it's official. But, you know, based on the stats and stuff that you've read historically, when it comes to the FDA, uh, all signs point in a positive direction based on some of the stuff that they've outlined. Is that what I'm understanding? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, this has been good. Um, good work. You know, I think a lot of investors will uh, leave some comments below. If anybody wants to reach out to Peyton and ask some more questions that I may have missed, feel free to uh, provide any feedback. More than happy to reach back out to him and get some information over to you guys. But I think this has been helpful as far as guiding in the right direction. But I think most importantly, it's just like, what is this 2024 uh, game plan look like? Do you have the proper means? You want to get the burn rate down to zero. Uh, you know, that's uh, a pretty bold statement to make, but uh, I think people just want to understand what this collaboration agreement, you know, uh, that you're building with uh, Lycos, what this is looking like over the course of time, what these uh, projected dates are as far as MDMA being approved, which we have a better understanding as to what it'll be. And then once that happens, just how do you start producing revenue and moving in incremental uh, um, uh opportunities i should say so uh, a lot of moving parts but you know at least there's something to talk about i bring this up in the cannabis space too that there's a lot of drama around rescheduling but at the end of the day it's uh great to see uh both industries moving in i think the right direction which proves or should be uh a, an interesting back end of 2024 yeah agreed very much agreed i'll uh, i'll wrap with uh so in the maps press release it says the FDA grants priority review for drugs that, if approved, would represent significant improvements in the safety or effectiveness of the treatment, diagnosis, or prevention of serious conditions when compared to standard applications. Wow. There you go. All right, we're going to leave a link to that press release in our comment section so you can review yourself. But that's say, thanks for explaining that. But that's what that means. Yep. Time to get thanks to work. So much. Time to get to work, buddy. Back to work. All right. Good to see you. Man. You as well. Take care. Take care. Hey everyone, so how are you surviving these tough market conditions right now? Are there any emerging industries that you want us to cover? Any guests that you want us to interview? Then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to source out. As usual, share this video with your network, smash that like and notification bell, and as usual, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.